The Fixated Persons Investigation Unit will focus on the detection, intervention and prevention of lone actor and fixated person threats across the state. The unit will proactively identify people who may be vulnerable to rapid radicalization or commit grievance fueled attacks and disrupt their ability to engage in violence. That's the charter of one of the most secretive state-based police units in Australia. The New South Wales Police Fixated Persons Investigation Unit. So secretive, in fact, that the only reason we have the charter is because New South Wales Parliament voted unanimously to release all documents pertaining to the botched arrest and prosecution of my producer, Christo, and the targeting of me and the operation of Friendly Geordies by the unit. If you need a refresher of what's gone down so far, here's a playlist. We have those documents now. And once you get over the absurdity of the fact that a terror intelligence unit was assessing how dangerous the content on this channel was, yes, that's something that is in those documents. You can start to piece together a timeline that demonstrates not just the maliciousness and politicization of the unit and targeting friendly Geordies, but the existential crisis the unit must have been in to bring it to that point. As the charter clearly states, the fixated persons unit is there to stop violence. Yet as senior police have stated, and internal police assessments have clearly concluded, friendly Geordies has never posed a threat of violence. So why do the terror police stray beyond the confines of their charter and spend most likely millions of taxpayer dollars setting up a dedicated strike force to go after me? Yes, that's another thing those documents reveal. A strike force to go after a YouTube channel. Strike force Wyarjin. That's a question no one seems to be able to answer, not the ex-police commissioner, not the current police commissioner, not even the ex-police minister, not even the ex-deputy premier. Which is strange, because if there was nothing untoward about it, you'd think someone would be more than happy to take the credit for this police operation, as usually politicians and cops are scrambling over one another to get to the podium first to announce that they got an arrest. The documents released by Parliament don't completely reveal the genesis of Strike Force Wyarjin, but they do give us a lot of clues. This video is an attempt to take you along with us while we examine those clues. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling Standing Order 52 parliamentary call for papers. So let's begin. We have emails that reveal in mid-September of 2020, a day or two after the Bruz video was put out, that the Deputy Premier's office was demanding the police conduct a bug sweep of his holiday house. This is an email from the Department of Premier and Cabinet Security Unit to New South Wales Police. There's gonna be a lot of reading in this video, not many written jokes, because the documents are the jokes. They write themselves. What do you expect from a comedian anyway, huh? To write all his material? Welcome to showbiz, baby. But uh, if this is anyone other than the Department of Premier and Cabinet Security Unit, you're stealing my bit. Separately, the Deputy Premier's office is seeking advice on completing a TSCM, Technical Surveillance Countermeasure, sweep of the property where the video was filmed. This isn't the primary residence. The satirical nature of the video and the use of open source information content leads us to believe that this may be unnecessary. That the video has been broadcast may also suggest that the individual isn't inclined to carry out these type of activities. I haven't seen a floor plan, but would suggest a TSCM sweep would be in the vicinity of 10 to 12K. So Barillaro's office wanted the taxpayer to fork out 10 to $12,000 for a bug sweep of the Deputy Premier's Airbnb side hustle house. And I had already paid thousands to stay in that house. Put aside the delusional level of entitlement there. If you're worried about your Airbnb being bugged as the Deputy Premier, Probably not gonna be a comedian bugging it, is it? And let's be honest, you probably shouldn't have a side hustle Airbnb to begin with. Around the same time, seemingly at the department's request, the Police Terrorism Intelligence Unit completed an assessment of Friendly Geordies. What a bizarre sentence. Anyway, they sent in an email with the following, the actions of Mr. Shanks are lacking in maliciousness and ill intent at this time, with nothing to suggest the activities of Shanks were done for anything beyond journalistic reasons at this time. Not unlike the chaser or paparazzi photographers who often operate just within the confines of the law, I'm unable to advise you on the necessity of conducting a sweep of the property. However, in my opinion, unless it was a primary residence that was let it out on this one occasion, it is difficult to see the need given it is an Airbnb open to the public to book and stay in. 
There are currently no adverse holdings across New South Wales police systems indicating any actual or perceived threat posed by Shanks to Barilaro at this time. So there you have emails from Berejiklian's office and the New South Wales Police Terrorism Intelligence Unit that are pretty sensible. What you'd expect from half functional public servants, I guess, saying no, a comedian paying you thousands to stay at your house and filming a little is not enough of a threat to warrant a CIA bug sweep. Maybe if Alexander Downer stayed at your house, it would be worth doing. So how do you go from that to a strike force? We really don't know. It seems the police are deliberately omitting certain documents, but what we do know is that as soon as the fixated persons unit get involved, they do as much as they possibly can to punish friendly Geordies. How do they get involved? Well, do you remember how ex-police commissioner Mick Fuller claimed he was only briefed about the investigation after the unit took action? Commissioner, where did you become? Were you briefed by the unit before they took that no, action? No, no. Look, I was given a high-level briefing, verbal briefing, in the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know who friendly Geordie were. That's kind of strange, as I have a rather short chain of emails, beginning with an email from Detective Superintendent Michael McLean, commander of the Anti-Terrorism Intelligence Group. The email is addressed to Assistant Commissioner Mark Walton, Assistant Commissioner Gavin Wood, Detective Chief Inspector Peter Foe, all of who co-owned racehorses with Commissioner Fuller exposed by an ABC investigation. They're not the only ones who were sent the email though. So was the second in command, the Deputy Police Commissioner at the time, Mick Willing, Detective Inspector David El Badawi, Detective Chief Inspector Adam Barwick, Inspector Jeremy Wu, Detective Senior Sergeant Mary Crumlin, Inspector Craig Wonders, and Mick Fuller's own Chief of Staff, Jason Weinstein. So essentially everyone remotely senior in the New South Wales Police, apart from the Deputy Commissioner Dave Hudson and now Commissioner Karen Webb, who in all honesty don't seem to be a part of the fuller clique. The email is sent on the 2nd of December, the day after I called Barilaro and asked about allegations surrounding extramarital affairs. It reads as follows. Good afternoon. See attached briefing note in respect to the matter involving Jordan Shanks contacting the Deputy Premier, whom they met with earlier today. As previously outlined, we have investigated a matter involving Joe Hildebrand and he has declined to pursue any action at this point. We have received no other referrals for investigation, although Detective Sergeant McQueen outlines there is content online involving other journalists. We have not intrusively looked at this aspect at this point in time. I have instructed the FPIU that we will not be taking any action to arrest Shanks for offences against the Deputy Premier without obtaining advice as to sufficiency of evidence. The investigation is ongoing and I will update further as appropriate. Any questions or points of clarification, please let me know. Regards, Michael McLean. Commissioner Fuller's Chief of Staff and the Head of Strike Force Raptor, you know, the Strike Force meant to disrupt the worst organised crime in the country, responds to McLean with, Mick, are we considering an AVO application? Surely the attending of his rental know his electorate? And the phone calls are sufficient grounds for an AVO whilst you explore the criminal charges side, Jason Weinstein. Whoa, explore the criminal charges side. You know, that comedian who's making fun of our mate. Why don't we just explore some criminal charges? Not too sure if there actually are any crimes, but hey, when has that stopped us? New South Wales police acting like some eastern suburbs mum having a midlife crisis and just exploring options, are they? Keep in mind, this is from Mick Fuller's Chief of Staff CCing the Commissioner just below Mick Fuller, but apparently, according to his testimony, given on oath, Fuller was none the wiser. Michael McLean responds with, Hi mate, we are looking to do some surveillance on him to see if we can pick anything up. Perhaps stalking. I think pushing ahead with a PVO at this time may create unnecessary noise and an accelerated platform for Shanks given his manner of operation. Should things escalate and there is a genuine fear or threat of violence, we will certainly take that route. I will keep you updated on the investigation, MM. Jason responds with, copy Matt. Ah, how comforting. And where to begin? First off, Mick Fuller's chief of staff was being personally updated on an investigation into me, but Mick Fuller had no clue. But more importantly, surveillance. I wonder if this is when the strike force was set up. Barilaro got a phone call from me and the police's response is to get the counter-terrorism team to stalk me in a bizarre attempt to prove that I'm a stalker. 
did you find? Apart from the constant police surveillance and the fact that authorities treat me like Tony Soprano, I live a pretty plain life. I make videos and I ride all day and in my free time I look at my fish tanks. Uh, well, she seems to be visiting the aquarium a lot. <clears throat> Maybe we could explore charging him with animal cruelty. Goldfish aren't stupid. When I look in their eyes through the glass prison, I see myself begging to be freed. Also, I'm stupid and eat donuts. This is the modus operandi of the fixated persons unit. They have a target, they pursue that target no matter whether they're a criminal or not. The documents released really demonstrate that fact, or at the very least, the complete waste of police resources the unit is. As also released by the parliament are the draft business rules for the unit. According to them, the FPIU is comprised of 19 staff, 17 police, two civilian police employees, yeah? But another Doc Parliament release seems to list everyone stationed in the unit, and that adds up to be over 30. Anyway, just for this analysis, let's just pretend that there are give or take 20 cops slash employees of the Fixated Persons Unit. From 2017 to October of 2021, the unit investigated 216 individuals. 50% of who were alleged to be fixated with a politician or public office holder. The unit charged 89 of the 216 with only 47 receiving criminal conviction. In around five years, 19 cops got 47 convictions, averaging around 0.5 of a conviction a cop a year. That's a cop that works at the fixated person's unit average. It gets better though. Before COVID brought out all the Clive Palmer types, do you know how many individuals the fixated persons unit charged in 2019? Eight. 19 cops. A ridiculous amount of resources for surveillance phone taps, and I'm guessing KFC, and eight people charged. You can fit the same amount of people in a Kia Carnival. I know what you might be thinking. These are some serious charges like terrorism, homicide, etc. No. We have the Homicide Squad for that. So what are the charges and what do they exist for? Well, since being created, the Fixated Persons Unit has laid over 450 charges, yet all of those charges are only on around 90 people. There's another clue right there. They explore throwing around as much shit to the wall as they can and then pray that something sticks. I have a list of all the charges the Fixated Persons Unit has laid and let me tell you, they really do love to explore criminal charges. There are some laws in here that I just didn't know existed. Their bread and butter seems to be use carriage service to menace, harass or offend. This is the saying mean shit online about me charge. They laid eight of these charges. Some poor f was charged 29 times with that offence. Keep in mind, this charge isn't for threatening to kill someone online or via text, or even just plain threatening. There are some separate, more serious charges for that. This is just offending someone with a phone. You only need to see what the cops did to Charles Tim to know that this can be abused. There's around 39 stalk slash intimidate charges, the same charge Christo got, so you know how low the bar is for that. There are low level driving offences like driving motor vehicles during disqualification periods. There's owner not disclose identity of driver slash passenger. There's quite a lot of possess cannabis or prohibited drugs. There's at least one for enter enclosed premises without lawful excuse, which is just the poor man's trespass. And it could be for something as dumb as stepping in someone's driveway. In fact, in terms of strictly indictable offenses, they're the serious offenses that carry long sentences. I counted 32, half of which on one person. And sure, some of these charges were valid and maybe even a bit under a quarter of them became convictions, but do you need a dedicated terror police unit with surveillance powers to charge someone with possessing pot? Well, you'd think not. But the point of the fixated persons unit in laying these charges isn't to secure convictions. No, no, these charges are laid for a few reasons. One, to justify continued existence of the fixated persons unit, and two, to harass the so-called fixated persons into submission, ruin, or actual crime. Because here's where we get to some of the stranger, more exploratory charges laid by the unit. There's recruit child to carry out slash assist in criminal activity. I covered this charge in my video here. There's one for leave slash send substance slash article to create false belief danger. 
one for knowingly drive vehicle in manner menaces other, then perhaps my personal favorite, sedition. Yes, they actually charge someone with that along with urge the overthrow of constitution slash government by force, etc. You know, just along that line. <laughs> Hello, you have reached the fixated persons unit. Use the dial pad to select from the crimes being committed. You have selected urge the overthrow of constitution slash government by force. If you know the name of the government being overthrown, press one. Then there's intimidate police officer in execution of duty. This one's kind of interesting because another document released by parliament shows that at the same time they were trying to get me on contempt of court. Remember that? Remember the suppression order application the cops admitted that both sounded and was spelt like it was a sovereign citizen proclaiming sovereignty over their quarter acre block? It wasn't just us that thought it was bizarre. I mean, Having someone who can't spell disseminate try and put you in prison is a bit like having a 14 year old try to bash you. It's just kind of sad. Parliament released some texts from senior police lawyers to each other. Safe to say, they weren't impressed. Not sure if you're aware of this in video from Shanks. Yep, sure that. He drafted the application with all the spelling mistakes. I wish they'd come to us to draft the application. Amateur hour just empowers them now. That's what I want to know. Who did draft the application? They're right. It's fucking embarrassing. I guess everyone makes mistakes, even cops. I want you have seen your police lawyers who sent tech shitbagging their colleagues terrible spelling when they should have known full well as lawyers they could be subpoenaed or SO 52'd and those texts would come out. Then again, that wouldn't be as much of a mistake as hiding the material, which I suspect certain cops are currently doing. Amateur hour. Though I must say I am feeling fairly empowered. Anyway, where were we? Ah oh, yes, at the same time they were trying to get me on contempt of court, the police were putting together briefs and seeking legal advice to charge me with section 60 of the Crimes Act. Do you know what that is? Assault and other actions against police officers. Seeing as the documents say that the cops are getting a statement from Detective Sergeant Matthew McQueen for the charges, and I've never seen McQueen in person in my life, I can only assume the cops were planning on charging me for my videos about Christo's arrest, which I guess fits perfectly with the MO of the FPU. Harass, surveil, and charge until something sticks. They didn't end up charging me, but they seriously sought legal advice and I think genuinely wanted to. What stopped the cops, I think, could have been Deputy Commissioner Hudson bringing in some common sense when he found out that the contempt application existed. He's the one commissioner who seems to actually respect the law and have a moral compass. That and the magistrate essentially telling them to toughen up when they were arguing for her to find me in contempt of court because I made jokes about cops, saying the criticism should be water off a duck's back. If it's not, sue him. Which I'm glad the fixated persons unit didn't arrest me for digitally intimidating this man. But of course the saga doesn't end there. It looks like Detective Sergeant Matthew McQueen seriously considered the magistrate's advice. I have this email that demonstrates the shocking and vile sense of impunity and entitlement being a detective in the fixated persons unit must infer. It's from Matthew McQueen to Michael McLean, the anti-terrorism commander. I am seeing a Michael Burns, a lawyer from McNally Jones Staff Lawyers today as a result of the police association agreeing to pay costs for an assessment regarding the defamation against me regarding material published on Friendly Geordies. In this regard, could I please have a copy of any official notification from the LECC regarding the outcome of the investigation regarding allegations of assault against myself made by Jordan Shanks on Friendly Geordies? I intend to present any such letter to Michael Burns. Regards, Matthew McQueen. Would you look at that? It appears Matthew McQueen got the police union. You know, the union that should be advocating for pay rises for cops, safer working conditions, or maybe paying legal costs for defense of an action undertaken in operational duties to pay for a defamation assessment against me. 
If I was a normal rank and file police association member, I'd be emailing the union, calling the union, demanding answers as to why my dues are being spent on defamation legal costs for this man. Ah, oh, and you know how he asked to get the result of the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission investigation into his clear-cut assault of Christo's family? Christo's family or lawyers still haven't been informed by the cops about the result of their investigation, an investigation undertaken by the police themselves. Yet McQueen is demanding the results as some sort of certificate to present to a lawyer paid by unknowing hardworking police union members so he can waste more of the court's time and other people's money to engage me in yet another vindictive and malicious legal skirmish. Except this time, the mask is off. McQueen isn't able to stick with his clearly bullshit pretext that he's going after me in his role as a detective sergeant to keep New South Wales safe from lone wolf actors. Police aren't going to greenlight him to charge me with sedition anymore. So he's gone with a defamation suit. His pure personal vendetta and spite have been laid bare for all to see. Just how the fixated persons unit lay charges they know will fail in order to grind down their targets. Throughout this entire ordeal, the police, Barilaro, his lawyers, they've all pursued or at least attempted to pursue over 10 different legal avenues to punish friendly Geordies. Defamation, AVO, stalk, stalk, intimidate, intimidate, AVO, suppression order, contempt section 60, and defamation again. No violence, no threats, no risk, just videos that told the truth. Every one of those actions up until now was withdrawn or hasn't been pursued, touch wood. But if we didn't have the support of you guys, the audience, the legal fund, the very smart lawyers and equally smart politicians questioning the police in parliament, we could be broke, imprisoned or homeless. And that's the power of the fixated persons unit. It needs serious, serious scrutiny because at best the unit is superfluous and wasteful. At worst, it's a vehicle for fixated individuals to commit seemingly never ending grievance fueled attacks against innocent people. One of the other things these documents reveal is that the New South Wales police force religiously monitor this channel. So just a heads up guys. We now have thousands of documents pertaining to Strike Force Meatball that were released by Parliament that we're yet to examine. So there will be lots, lots more videos on you soon. Rest assured, some of the funniest stuff is still to come. But honestly, there are shootings in Sydney every few weeks. So I really think you should be using your resources elsewhere. So I'll make an undertaking. Yeah? I promise I won't post anything on my channel that falls within the scope of the Fixated Persons Unit Charter just like I haven't so far. Stop following me and do your jobs. Everyone else, like and subscribe. Sign up to our Patreon because we need everything we can to fight against this. Those documents aren't going to read themselves, you know. Get a fixated person's unit themed shirt. Now available at friendlygeordies.com. Also get a badge. Please share and comment below. Come in. You know, that's not how you do with prop food, you know, just keep eating it out of the shots. Well, I'm hungry now. <laughs> no, don't f***ing <laughs> <it. laughs> mm, forbidden donor. <laughs>